presentation to start. We were like, where's the presentation? And then we were supposed to be listening to bats and they clicked on these ultrasonic detectors all aimed out over the spring. And you guess what we heard, right? Phenomenal. There was all this sound that we were missing. None of us knew it was there. Well, that really was uh, a sound opening experience for me in my career. I realized how much of the natural world is taking place out there that we all miss. Well, that's the very type of thing our speaker tonight, uh, Dr. Milton Garces, has really picked up on. He loves to hear what we're missing, and in this case, the world of infrasound. Uh, in particular, he loves providing his audience with a unique audio perspective into earthquakes, tsunamis, and various sound recordings. Tonight, you get to hear what you've been missing. <laughs> Dr. Milton Garces, welcome. Are we going to do that? Put this on. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we are going to expand our sense of hearing into a realm that we are not used to listening at, but we are used to sensing. We sense it almost palpably. It's, it's a tactile sensation. Uh, anything below about 20 cycles per second, we, we lose the sense of tone. It turns into a sense of rhythm. And it, which gets deeper than that, it's almost like a deep uh, beat, right? So uh, I'm going to be talking about time scales and the inverse time scales that we call cycles per second. And uh, just for a reference, uh, two cycles per second is about 120 beat per minute, which is a pretty hopping swing team. So time and sound all together, this is how we perceive a uh, tempo. And so, so going back to the network here in Hawaii, we have a station in Kona. This was followed by a station in uh, the backyard of one of our colleagues in the uh, volcano area. And then the Hawaii Volcano Observatory also installed two more stations near Kilauea Volcano on the slope of Mauna Loa. And what's the aim? If there's a volcanic eruption in Kilauea ongoing right now, we can use two of the stations to point back to it. And if there's one in Mauna Loa, we can use two of the stations to find out where it's coming from. So this allows us, because we can tell direction, to identify different sources of eruptive activity on the island to monitor the whole region. <coughs> so um, this is going to be an interesting exercise. Uh, so as you might all recall, uh, the Hale Mau Mau event is a, it's a recent situation. Uh, and it was preceded by a, a cracking of the ground and a parting of, uh, uh, <laughs> of the earth and the fountain out of fire. And then this new crater was born. Well, um, this became an inspiration. I got a chance to, to work with a musician who made a percussive piece out of it. Um, and part of the beauty of uh, this, the birth of Hale Mama is that it's a very musical type of experience. Now, I'm going to put this microphone on the speakers because that's uh, how we figured out this is going to work. But you should be able to see how this all works. Hold on. So to create this signature, we sped it up by a factor of 100. So it's equivalent of shrinking the volcano by a factor of 100. So basically, you're kind of like honey who shrunk the kids kind of get. So honey who shrunk the volcano are going to shrink it by 100 times and then play it. tonality that followed the, the breaking of the ground, it's persistent. There's a real nice little ringing that goes after it, and, uh, and, and that's a characteristic of Kilauea Volcano. Most volcanoes don't sing that nicely. She's actually got a pretty good voice. 
Mm -hmm. So um, this is um, a bit of a complicated plot. Uh, before Halemama was born, uh, the whole Pu'u O'o crater complex collapsed. We just kind of got flushed down. And then the, again, the ground parted and lava came out in the middle. Um, and what was interesting about this episode was that we, we could track it. And remember, I mentioned that with, with the sensor systems that we have, we can point where things are coming from. So we have a, an array sitting up slope. And so we could tell how this fissure went zipper one way and then zipper the other and then zipper the other throughout the whole week. And then eventually stabilize in what is now the eruptive cycle where both Halemama and Pu'u go. And so that, that became a real interesting uh, experience for us because we didn't think we could do that in real time. So if you're wondering where the fire is coming out, you can just look at the sound and say it's coming from there. It's simple as that way. And um, this is an animation, a collaboration between HVO and us where we sped up and animated the collapse of Pu'u. Let's see how this comes through. <laughs> Again! <laughs> so these are on YouTube actually. Um, if you go under um, iSound Hunter, you can see these guys too. So that happened. <laughs> and then, um, then we got busy uh, trying to figure out what's going on. And now it's, now it's status quo. And um, shortly after that, uh, we, had, uh, uh, we worked with the um, Hawaii Volcano Observatory to build more stations so we can cover all types of eruptive activity potentially on the islands. And so this is where the other stations came through. So let me show you some other things that uh, we had, um, in 2013, we had a nice uh, crater. Uh, you, you, maybe if you're lucky, you've seen some of this, where a chunk of the wall comes down and then basically triggers a burst. And so what you can see here is uh, what that would look like. And, and this is going to get weird again. How oh, good? Here you go. You can see the detection in the nearest station. And then as it moves away, you can see a time delay because sound takes time to travel. And so the, the time difference between here and there is the difference of the speed of sound from one station to the other. And that is a limit on how soon you can get information from acoustics. And seismic in earthquakes, it's a factor of 10 faster. And on the water acoustics, a factor of five faster. So sound is relatively slow, but when things happen near the surface, that's the best way to get information out of it. So we figured, okay, so let's build an app for this. <laughs> Why not, right? Everybody's doing it. <laughs> so if you go to the um, um, App Store right now, and if you type Infrasound, and you have an iPhone, then you own iPod Touch, you can record Infrasound in your phone. And uh, this is something that uh, previous to the iOS 6, we could not do. And uh, we found the magic switch to allow your microphones inside your phone to actually record infrasound. And then if you want to analyze it, you just pick up another app <laughs> and use your phone to process it. And so, you know, prior to this, you had to pay $10,000 for a sensor and $10,000 for a data acquisition system <laughs> to do this kind of work. Uh, so now we're trying to build tools for anybody to be able to do this, to collect the data, to collect information. And so, moving forwards, uh, we worked with the Hawaii Volcano Observatory and said, well, you know, can we just put this in your office? 
They said, okay. So, <laughs> so this is the Hawaii Volcano Observatory, just you know, um, down the road. Those of you who have seen Halemama Crater and all its glory know where this is. It's right around the corner. And um, we deployed an array in our friends' offices. We use the Wi-Fi. These are iPod touches, by the way. They're not even phones, right? They're like music players. <laughs> and we turned them on and waited because things happen. And, and things happened. <laughs> Let me see. Let me find my mouse again. It's temperamental. Hello. Mousey, 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 mouse. Has anybody seen my mouse? <laughs>